So you guys may remember that a few weeks ago I called out Nestle, the largest food company in the world, which raked in almost $12 billion in sheer profit last year. I criticized the company specifically for its corporate takeover of water. Because you see, Nestle owns multiple brands of water, including this one right here, Poland Spring. In fact, bottled water might just be Nestle's most lucrative product. Well, shortly after that video aired, this network received a vaguely threatening letter from Nestle, accusing me of making a series of, quote, offensive and hysterical allegations that have no basis in fact. According to Nestle, one of those allegations was that I accused the company of, quote, leaving villagers dying of thirst and sucking the world dry, leaving millions of people without a drop to drink. Wow, Nestle, ever heard of the term hyperbole? Clearly, I'm not saying that Nestle is literally stealing the entirety of the world's water supply. But if you think that their PR machine is in full swing now, just wait, because this is about to get cray. Initially, Nestle said that it would be glad to offer clarification if I had asked for a response. And so to be fair, I invited them on the show and offered them a platform to set the record straight. But instead, I got this. Hello, Abby. I'm Stephanie from Nestle. We saw the video you post on YouTube criticizing Nestle over water. So here's our response. Wait, was that serious? <laughs> okay, <laughs> but seriously, thank you, Stephanie, for the prompt response in video form, which I'll play now in full and interject my response since I can't talk to you like a real human being. So please, go on. You claimed we make a huge profit on bottled water, but the figures you quoted were all wrong. In reality, we pay more for our water than other groundwater users. First of all, I never said that Nestle pays any less or any more than its competitors. But you know what? She's right. I did quote an incorrect figure. The profit I cited of 53,908,255% was calculated from the Council of Canadians, Canada's largest citizen advocacy organization which receives zero corporate or government funding. According to their website, Nestle pays $3.71 for every million liters of water it pumps from the local watershed which are then packages in single-use plastic bottles and sells back to the public for as much as $2 million. As Stephanie points out, the insane profit margin of 53 million percent doesn't take into account some important costs. Then you have to add the manufacturing costs, infrastructure, water resource protection, quality control, salaries, storage, distribution, in fact, the profit margin is less than 10%. You know, 10% doesn't sound like that much, but unfortunately, I couldn't find a breakdown of how much Nestle spends on any of those things. However, I did gain some insight on how extensive Nestle's water treatment process is. Turns out that Nestle was recently embroiled in a lawsuit after it was discovered that one of their brands, Ice Mountain, was really just, well, repackaged tap water. Yes, folks. Tap water, which, by the way, costs about 2,000 times less when it's not encased in plastic. But even if Nestle is just repackaging tap water, to be fair, I'm still not counting for the cost of extracting oil to make the non-biodegradable plastic water bottles, shipping them around the planet to be consumed in mere minutes, only to be then thrown in the trash and shipped to landfills in India. So what's next? We claimed we take water during droughts in Canada. In fact, we've always reduced our water use during droughts and will continue to do so. We use less than 1% of the available spring water at Hillsborough in Ontario. The water cycle naturally replenishes every drop of this water. Wait, millions of gallons of water extracted from lakes and reservoirs will be magically replaced by nature? Okay, so what about during droughts? Well, according to the Huffington Post, the Ontario government tried to put limits on Nestle's water extraction during shortages. But guess what? Being the big, powerful corporation it is, Nestle was able to convince the Ontario Ministry of the Environment to remove the restrictions. Back to you, Stephanie. You claimed our chairman doesn't believe water is a human right. That's wrong. He does. The whole company does. We've long recognized the human right to water and we ensure all our people respect it. Really? Really? You know what? I'm just going to let your boss, Peter Brabeck, chairman and former CEO of Nestle, respond. Water is, of course, the most important raw material we have today in the world. 
It is a question of whether we should privatize the normal water supply for the population. And there are two different opinions on the matter. The one opinion, which I think is extreme, is represented by the NGOs who bang on about declaring water a public right. Stephanie, your boss just said that thinking of water as a public right is an extreme view. Clearly not shared by him, since he then goes on to say that water should be applied a market value just like any other food. Carry on. There's a global water crisis that threatens food security, and we're determined to help address this. I couldn't agree with you more, Stephanie. There is a global water crisis, and I'll tell you what's making it worse. The bottled water industry is mining water, taking it away from its public municipal sources and selling it to make a profit. So, is there anything else you'd like to say? We want to thank you, Abby, for drawing attention to water. It's an important issue, an important resource. But we would urge you and your viewers to look for the facts about our use of water on our website, nestle.com. Stephanie, you're welcome. And thank you for that awesome video with that beautiful green screen landscape. Hey, Stephanie, maybe I'll see you again in Nestle's new ad campaign for Pure Life, a high-end bottled water that targets stylish, rich women. Oh, and did I mention that this new brand will get its water from an endangered salmon fish hatchery in Oregon, according to the state's Department of Fish and Wildlife. But don't worry, Nestle will still be paying the same standard price for this more high-end water. Folks, here's what all this water talk boils down to. Initially, the idea of privatizing a resource that every living thing on Earth depends on was scoffed at, especially considering how water is practically free already. Now, water is a multi-billion dollar industry that tricks people into essentially buying filtered tap water wrapped in plastic waste. And did I mention that the EPA standards for tap water are much more stringent than the FDA's oversight on bottled water? So really, what is the difference? Look, if there's one thing to take away, it's this. Filter your own water, and not just to save a buck, but to save the future of the Earth.